In today's video, what I'm working on is a Bird 3 scooter. We're gonna get this converted. We're gonna be installing a 36 volt, 350 watt, 18 amp controller. This was only $13 on Amazon. And this is the step down converter. This is 36 volt, step down to 12 volt. I'll show you guys how to wire that here in a minute. This was only $10. So if you're on a tight budget, this is very cheap. If you wanna get these things, link in my description box. I'll post the links for this, as well as everything else that I use in this video, such as my heat shrink, my soldering gun, wire cutters, etc. All right, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now up top, this is what it looks like. Now you have to pop this off, obviously, and right underneath, if you go back and check one of my very first videos where I explained the GPS module, you'll see where it sits at. Now that's gotta be taken out, and once that is, you're left with pretty much a harness of wires, just like you see here. Right here at the wire harness, you wanna go down to where the connector is and disconnect. Do the same thing all the way around. And right here where there's no connectors, what you wanna do is just clip it with some cutters. Now I like to clip both of these connectors, this yellow and green, and this three wire connector, because they do come in handy for your throttle and your headlight. So now let's go ahead and find our throttle wires. And that's the only thing we need because our headlight wire is right here. So we know where that is, obviously. The only sleeve of wires going this way towards the throttle is what we need to focus on. So let's go ahead and find our throttle wire. So we're gonna start off by using a T27 to loosen up the front brake cable. Using a T25 to loosen up this right brake lever. Let's go ahead and remove this rubber grip. That way we can get this and the brake lever out of place. You wanna pull this brake lever out some, pull this in and release this brake cable from inside. Now what you wanna do is just pull all of this out together and the sleeve will come along with it. Let's go ahead and clip off this connector because we know where it goes to this brake lever and we're not gonna use that. And now we can remove this. So now that we have this removed, it's easier for us to identify which wires we need to use. Now we can go ahead and pull this out. Just like that. These wires here are not used. Let's clip them. Now with our throttle removed and in your hand, you can easily identify which wires you need to use. You see you have four wires here, yellow, red, black, and blue. Go ahead and take this black tape off wires that are separate we're not going to use them it's right up top you have the wires you need blue black yellow and red now that we have this you don't have to worry about the extra wires now since you already have this off let's go ahead and get rid of this blue wire because it's just an extra wire and it's not needed let's just clip that off that way you guys won't get confused and not know which wires to use. We're only left with three wires. Red is your positive. Red is your positive, black is your negative, and the yellow is your signal wire. So now let's go ahead and put this back in place. Now 
now let's go ahead and get our brake lever on. Just repeat the process. Let's go ahead and install our rubber grip. Let's go ahead and get this thing flipped upside down and get this battery pack out the housing. Now using a T45 security bit, we have one, two, three. Now again, using a T45, we have three, one, two, three bolts we have to remove. Now we're moving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point security screws using this special bit. It's a T25, but this is not your average six point. This is seven points. Let's go ahead and get these undone. All right, as you can see, they lift it out. And again, you guys, Make sure you check out the link description. I'll have all of these in my description box. That way you guys can get you a pair. That's if they still have them. Be sure I'll put this in the description. Using the T25. Once again, just like before, using a T25 to remove these four screws in the front. Go ahead and lift up on the back side. Remove this tab, this back cover. What we're gonna do is break these tabs free. Just like before, you're gonna disconnect these tabs that are connected to the battery. That way we can lift this up and remove it. Now we can lift up our battery. Now moving on to the battery pack. So to remove these, what I used was an eight millimeter socket. Now from this side, we're gonna disconnect on the controller. We're gonna pull out the battery terminal and these little data wires here. Just push the clip in and pull out. Go ahead and clip these connectors. Use them for later. This is trash. Trash, trash. This is your hall sensor. This is for your backlight. Just disconnect these. Now you can unscrew this. What I'm going to do is remove this board by unscrewing these four Phillip screws. And we're gonna clip this metal connector going to our motor because we need this. So we're gonna keep this. And I'm gonna keep this XT60 female connector because I already have the opposite end. 
So again, guys, having to utilize with what I already have. I'm holding this board down with a pair of vice grips and just another pair of pliers. I'm gonna break the board away until I can get the majority of this XT60 connector. And there you go, just like that, you have yourself an XT60 connector. Using a razor blade, we're gonna remove all of this white putty here. Now our battery should be able to slide out. So I like to do this on both ends, just in case I have to take the battery out from the other side. The beam is bypass. Let's go ahead and lift this up. Just like that. There's our bypass. We're gonna drop that straight across like this. This is B plus. This is P plus. All right, so here goes my bypass. Right here is P plus. You can see the P right there at the top. It's covered with tape. And right here at the bottom, you can see the P minus. This is your B plus. There you have it, B plus, bridged to P plus. Now, when you go to test out voltage, you're gonna get 42 volts. But before, without this, you're gonna get zero volts, possibly three volts, and that's it, tops. So be sure you do this bypass if you want your battery to work properly. Right here where the kickstand is at, this is the back end of the battery. This is the back end of the scooter. So that being said, right here where these terminals are at on the battery pack, the battery has to fit just inside the exact way. So let's go ahead and put this in. That part may be confusing to you guys. Just know that it's not a big issue. All you have to do is flip the battery around and that's it. We're gonna push this battery all the way through. So right there is good. Right here at the side where the kickstand is, our controller is gonna fit just like this, or it can go on this end here, it doesn't matter. And this step down converter fits in here perfectly, just like so. And as long as you're not exceeding this little hole here, you're good to go. But this works perfectly for me. This is not even a hard job, to be honest with you. I'm gonna get all, all of our wires to fit in like this. Make sure everything's not pinching when it comes time to close it and everything fits in perfectly. So now let's go ahead and install these 12 millimeter buttons. We're gonna put one right here for our headlight and one at the back for our tail light. Now that we have our hole drilled, we can drop that in there. And on the opposite side, we have to tighten this up and that's it. Let's go ahead and work on our throttle. Since I'm gonna be using 12 volts for my headlight, right here what I'm using is two 30 ohm resistors. 
and parallel. So I'm gonna twist these up just like this. So right here in the center, as you can see, I added some solder just so we can keep these two resistors together. Now what I'm gonna do is clip it here with my cutters that we can be just straight across. Now with both of my resistors in parallel, you can see I've added some solder at the tip that's just so it can help make contact with this white lead right here going to the headlight. So now we're gonna put the opposite end of this connector for our headlight right on here. Now that we have our resistors onto our white wire going to the headlight, we're gonna put this white onto the green. Instead of it being white with white, we're gonna put white and then white to green on this side. We'll connect this green and this white to these prongs. Once one green to the one prong and the white to the other prong. I'm going to be adding these extensions here at the bottom because they're just not reaching to this button here. So let's go ahead and add our extensions. This green and this white wires, we're gonna connect one on one and the other on the other. It doesn't matter which side you put on which. So let's go ahead and get these connected. Go ahead and work on our throttle. All right, so right here for my throttle, what I did was put black with black red with red, and blue with yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this light. I'm gonna loosen up both of these fill up screws because at the bottom you can see that my light is not even sitting inside of its proper area. So we're gonna remove these screws and adjust this to where it needs to be at. Now what I'm gonna do is put a small piece of tape somewhere along this area, just because it's for safety. I don't want this resistor to ground out or give me any issues in the long run. That's that. Go ahead and get the top covered up and get these wires tucked in. So now we're done up top. We can finally shut it with the top cover and work on the bottom. This is my scooter so far. Now I have the tow top area already done. My light, my throttle, all my wiring is completed. I already got this topped off. Now we can move over to the bottom half. Inside here, you only have three sleeves of wire. This red and black goes to this charging port. This is for your throttle. And this is for my headlight and my connectors. Now I'm gonna grab some extra wire and add some extensions and get it fed back to where it can meet up with the controller. At this point, what we're gonna do is disconnect the tabs that we just added our extensions on for our throttle and our headlight. So let's go ahead and get these tabs disconnected. Let's go ahead and remove these tabs on both ends. Moving over to the controller, let's go ahead and start off with our three phase motor wires. With this, we're gonna add color to color. So blue is blue, yellow to yellow, and green with green. Now moving 
over to our main power supply. As you can see, there's three wires, a thick red wire, and then these two right here, this positive and negative. This wire was attached to it. However, I clipped a small portion of this so I can use it for my BMS bypass. So now let's go ahead and work on our main power supply. This is my Hall Effect sensor. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit of solder to the tips. So just to kind of kill any confusion, there's a white wire here that goes with the Hall Effect sensors. If you have it on your controller, go ahead and use it. But if you don't have it, just leave it out. It doesn't matter. So you're gonna stick with these five colors, blue, yellow, red, black, and green. Like I said, unless you have it, then use it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. All we're doing here is putting color with color, just like before. Since these wires are so fragile, I like to just kind of give them a tug after I've already heated the heat shrink in place, just to be sure none of these wires came loose during the process. If one did, you will have a Hall Effect sensor issue, which could be a loud noise. I like to do this just in case everything's good. We're gonna go ahead and work on our throttle now this may be confusing and throw a lot of you guys off so this throttle connector has four wires on it instead of three which is the average the typical so this one has four wires on it and what i'm gonna do is using some alligator clips i know for sure the red and black are my positive and negative now i'm either going to use green or white for my signal and i'm gonna go with green first and if that doesn't work then i'm gonna switch it over to the white Before we can get this controller to work, I need to wire in this key switch into this positive lead. So let's go ahead and cut a slit into this positive lead and just hardwire this in right here. So this here is just temporary. I'm gonna undo this after I figure out which wires I need for my throttle. Let's go ahead and plug in our back motor. Let's go ahead and plug in our battery supply. You wanna be sure that these wires that you just clipped are not touching. With some alligator clips, I'm gonna connect black with my black, green with green, red with red we want to do the same thing with this in here green i'm gonna connect to the blue red with red and black with black as soon as i touch this positive my back wheel started spinning so that indicates that this combination is correct so let's go ahead and connect this ground first so the wheel won't be free spinning. And now we connect our positive. I'm gonna go ahead and give it throttle and you notice that my wheel spins in the correct direction. Now, since that's the case, I do not need to, I do not need to connect my intelligent wires to correct my wheel rotation. Now let's go ahead and move over to this black and orange wire. Now, just like the self-study wires, these plug into each other, just like that. Once you do that, your cruise control is activated. So after about 10 seconds of holding the throttle in one position, your cruise control will automatically activate. And to disengage it, just simply tap the throttle 
and your cruise control disengages. Just as a reminder, this extra white wire that came in the throttle connector, do not use it, just clip it if it helps you make it easier. So just like that, I'm not using that. I'm also gonna put some heat shrink on it just to be on the safe side. Let's go ahead and jump over onto our three speed switch. Let's go ahead and put our motor on high speed. So, you know, let's get this out the way before I move on to the uh, step down converter in the backlight front light. What we're gonna do is drop a pin from color to color. So I know black grounded to blue is my high speed. So we're gonna cut black and we're gonna cut this blue and solder them together. So these alligator clips that I just used, they come in handy. I'll be sure I leave those down in the description box. That way you guys can grab you a pair as well. We're gonna drill a hole along here. That way we can fit this right inside. This is the male part of the XT90 connector. So this is gonna fit in there just like that. It's gonna indicate that the scooter is on. When you take it out, your scooter will be off. Let's go ahead and bridge these two straight across. The tire sits here. We have some cable extensions. We need to solder on here, this XT90 connector. We need them to feed inside the battery housing. So be sure they're towards the battery housing and not fed this way. As you can see, I cut off some of this rubber seal. So now that allows my motor wires, hall sensor wires, and my loop key wires to all fit through this little hole here. Go ahead and jump over to our backlight. Now this cable here goes with the backlight. This clips in just like this. Notice that this black goes with red and this red goes to the black. So be sure up here, you wire this correctly. So it's gonna be red is negative and black is your positive. Now we're gonna install our switch and right here where the wire is broken, we're gonna add one side to this switch and the other side to the other side of the switch. and get this fed under this little cover. Let's go ahead and install our motor and haul wire connector. Be sure that these wires go underneath this rubber seal. My back area is already completed as you can see. This switch is for my back light. This is my loop key. This is where that's going. And my shroud's already in place. Now let's go ahead and work on the step down converter. Let's go ahead and install our headlight connector. Now our throttle connector. 
Let's undo this key switch. I'm gonna cut into this black wire, this negative, just like we cut into the positive of the main lead. We're gonna add solder into this negative lead. So let's go ahead and wire up this step down converter. So you see it has four wires, black and red. This is gonna be your main power supply. So that being said, you're gonna plug your battery in to this positive and negative. This is gonna be your output, 12 volts, 10 amps, yellow being your positive, blue being your negative. Let's just go over how I have this step-down converter connected to the controller and everything else. Only thing I have connected to this step-down converter is just the main leads, positive and negative. And what they are going to is the positive and negative onto the controller. These are not connected yet. This loop key is not connected yet. And this little key switch is not connected yet. So now let's move on. Now moving over to the loop key. We have these two wires. What I'm gonna do is connect one of them to this positive side. It doesn't matter which side I connect to it. It could be this side. I'm gonna stick with this side because it has more solder on it. This is what I have left of the kill switch. This is what I'm going to be wiring to this red key ignition switch. That is what this looks like. When I drop this key into here, it completes the circuit. It puts power into the controller. And when you pull this out, you're pretty much breaking the line between the power and that's it when you use this key switch. We have our battery pack right here, ready to go. Now let's plug our controller in to the battery pack. Now, if I go down to the throttle and engage it, nothing's gonna happen. That's because I do not have the key in. Let's go ahead and drop this in. Now that's in, let's go ahead and hit this throttle. Now we take it out. All the power's killed. There it is. Now let's go ahead and wire the opposite end of this step down converter. Let's go ahead and disconnect this battery pack before we start messing with this 12 volt supply. So at this point, we're taking our headlight wires and our headlight wires, and we're gonna put the positive with the positive and negative with negative. If you've been watching since the beginning, you know that this black is gonna be my positive and this yellow is my positive. So in that case, we're putting these together and then we're gonna put the green and this red together. All right, so I have my headlight and tail light positives and negatives wired together. The heat shrink is only to keep these wires together and to keep them from breaking up while I'm connecting it to the step down converter. The output, which is 12 volts, we're gonna wire this into our headlight and our tail light. Yellow is positive, blue is negative. So now that I have this step down converter wired into my headlight and my tail light, let's go ahead and put this to the side and plug in our battery and hit our backlight. As you can see, my backlight is on. This is what I did not want to happen. Since this is out, I want all the power to be completely off, no power remaining. So I'm gonna go back and rewire two wires and show you guys what I messed up and how simple it is to fix it. The positive side of my step down converter, I'm gonna cut my main power line, which is this red wire. Now I see where I messed up. This is continuous power. It's not broken anywhere. So that's why the back light and the front light stay on even after not having the key inside. So we're gonna get this, strip it, and we're gonna feed this into this key switch wire. All 
All right, so basically what I did here was move the red wire to the step down converter and just rerouted it to the key ignition switch to the controller. So now that this is rewired, we should be good to go. So now let's go ahead and try this out again, see if this works. Okay, so that's a good indication. So my button's pushed in, let's go ahead and drop in the key switch. We have light action, and when we take it out, all power's cut off. So now let's go ahead and connect our charging port cable. And now we can put this front cover on. Here at this part, normally what I would do is add cloth tape all the way down to about right here, just to avoid from wires getting pinched in these little tight spots. I don't know where I left my cloth tape, so instead I'm gonna just put some Gorilla tape in some spots and go about doing it that way. Connect your charging port to the battery. Right here at the back, you wanna make sure there's no wires underneath this battery. So make sure you push them all back and you wanna unblock this nudge where the screw goes in because otherwise you'll be screwing into some wires. Go ahead and put our screws in for our battery housing, starting out with these six T45s. Since we have the tool for these seven point security screws, we're gonna go ahead and reuse them and put them back in their place. So this is it. This is the Bird 3 scooter with the 350 watt brushless controller. 18 amp. Everything I use on this scooter is going to be in the link description. So be sure you guys go and check that out. Also, if this video helped you out, be sure to smash that thumbs up. That's to everybody who sees this video, smash that thumbs up. It helps me get my content out. Also, if you have one of these scooters, any questions, drop it down in the comment box. Or for a faster response, you can reach me at my Discord. Just join the community. And once you're there, you can either contact somebody just in the general section and somebody will get to you or you can send me a message and that'd be a quick way for me to get to you so be sure to smash that thumbs up if you found the video useful until then i'll see you on the next one